<laughs> you may know this man. He's got a new novel, and it begins with a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. Stephen Kuntz is the author of the book, Liberty's Last Stand. And amazingly enough, we have this world-famous author, multi-bestseller. He's with me, right here, in New York City, on the set, no less. Thank See if it's an honor. Wow. Thank you, Stuart. You must have sold 50 million books? A hundred million. I hope so. <laughs> no, you, is hey, it a hundred million? get the check, I'll let you know. <laughs> now, look, what, what intrigued me about this was that um, you're writing about terrorism. You're writing honestly about terrorism. You're naming ISIS. You're naming the jihadis as right. being behind it. We're not used to that. We're, we're used to seeing the media walk away from any actual association of Islam and terror, and you walk right into it. Well, I think that it, uh, there are policies that allow really unvetted, undocumented immigrants in from a part of the world that's full of terrorism and jihadists, it's predictable. And so when I wrote this book in 2015, I thought, you know, sooner or later it's going to happen. Little did I know it's going to happen the weekend the book came out. You, um, you, you, it's not that you saw this coming, but there is a public appetite for this kind of book dealing with this particular subject, right? I think the public is very worried. and uh, that, that's hopefully why the, the book will do well. And the question becomes, what are, what are American citizens going to do in the face of a government that buries its head in the sand? You know, you just is, is your that last the subject segment. of your book? Yes. Is, is that how you, the book carries through? Yes. And uh, so, the president, a rogue president, declares martial law. Texas and other states declare their independence, and America has another civil war. That's the book. And. Uh, you know, you were just talking about the Second Amendment, which does not exist to allow people to have guns to go deer hunting. It, it's the American response to uh, what people need to do to be able to defend themselves against tyranny. And that was the uh, founding father's prescription. Let the people have weapons. And uh, the government is their enemy, not, not anybody else. I'll tell you something, Stephen. I can't imagine Hollywood making a movie out of that book. Well, well, it probably won't. But, but uh, you'd love to sell them the film rights, wouldn't you? Oh, indeed I would. <laughs> but they won't, will they? I mean, I just don't I think, don't think I've, so. I've not seen a movie from Hollywood that deals with terror, Islamic terror. Terrorists these days in movies have to be white. They have to be Christians or renegades of some sort. Right. They can never be Islam. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where Hollywood treats terror properly and realistically? I don't know. I have my hopes, but... Uh, this insistence that, that, that Islam is a, a, a creed, a, a culture that can be assimilated into American lifestyle. In fact, when they don't believe in anything that Americans believe in, it's amazing. You, yeah. you, you know, the, they don't believe in, uh, they believe in killing homophobes, uh, killing people who disagree with them religiously. They believe in women or chattel. And, you know, they don't believe in democracy. They believe in Sharia law. Have you, have you had this subject as the subject of your book previ books yes, previously? I've, I've You've played about with it on about three other books. They've all been well received. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it's Americans, one way or another, are going to have to face up to this. And fiction helps us. Okay, know. look, I, I would love to have written a book. I never have. I don't have original ideas, so I'm probably never going to write a book. But I want you to tell us, how do you go about it? Mm. Do you have a rough outline in the back of your mind about how the plot in proceeds? Mind. You have to know where, what the climax is before you start. Okay. A book is a journey to a destination, and a destination is a climax. Do you write it, what, chapter one first, chapter two second, Yes, chapter but then, three? of course, you go back and rewrite. This book uh, had three beginnings and two endings. so. You know, it's always a work in progress. Yeah, obviously you've got an editor. Yes. How much difference does the editor make? Do they say, take that out? Occasionally. Do they really? <laughs> yes, indeed. They could say that to Stephen Koontz. You bet. <laughs> the world's, one of the world's greatest best-selling authors. They well, say that you. to you? Oh, yes, indeed. How long does it take you to write a book of that length, like Liberty's Last Stand? It took a year. And uh, the one thing that uh, my editor at uh, Regnery, Harry Crocker, uh, he didn't like about the first draft that I had the character that represents Hillary Clinton being assassinated by a free fall in the elevator. He says, you've got to take that out. He says, I can see it in the New York Times. Conservative publisher kills Hillary. <laughs> and I said, that isn't the way it'll read. It'll be novelist Steve Kuntz kills Hillary. And he says, take it out. And I said, 
Yes, sir. <laughs> so it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's taken orders. Yeah. Okay, now the book is on sale as of now, is that yes, correct? Yes, it's uh, as of yesterday in all formats. Okay. Look, Stephen, thanks very much. It's an honor to have you with us. Thank you, Stephen. You've sold more books than I have, that's for sure, and more books than most, and that's a fact. Thank Stephen Koontz, everyone, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it.